everybody. 11.02 p.m. September 12th, 2017. All right, I have you on a chart that I want to share. Um, this is our West Coast chart, and this is our percentages of tropical storms and um, tropical depressions forming. Um, I've been watching this for about two days now, and I feel like there's enough information to share with you. If you noticed on the thumbnail, um, there was a hurricane right here, and that was a real picture. Um, that was not Photoshop or anything like that. That is the 17th projected um, from this disturbance right here. And what's interesting is that this one and this and this, they're all projected to move out to the west and uh, just kind of go. They may form later on down the road um, in some other waters uh, by other countries, but this one specific has a northern uh, path, and it shows it on Ventu Sky. Again, Ventu Sky can be wrong, but what I want to show you is that uh, what could possibly happen after that, and what my concern would be. Now, if you noticed, I'll bring it to Ventu Sky really quick. I have it already set up at the time. This is Sunday the 17th, so we're talking, we're at about 110 mile an hour winds, guys, and I'm just 10 meters off the ground, just so you know, on the GFS. This may change, but Guys, a hurricane here, even though it's all Mexico, um, has really big effects on the U.S. and can. Um, whenever there's hurricane situations or tropical storm situations in Southern California, which aren't um, unheard of, they have happened before, um, they're usually weaker tropical issues by then, but with the super droughts in California and stuff like that, think of the ground like a, a really dry sponge. It's just going to soak everything up. It's going to loosen things up. It's going to cause flooding, flash flooding, stuff like that. Or, guys, there's an option that this thing could, if it's powerful enough and it hits at the right angle, it could go over Mexico, it could reform here in the Gulf at some point, it could become a big system for uh, the mid part of the country. There's a lot of options here. Um, so, there are West Coast hurricanes that we need to focus on. It's been a while since there was any significant ones. This one may not be as big as they're saying. Um, I just saw 111 mile an hour. Um, and again, this is 10 meters. This isn't the 1,500 meter setting. Um, for the most part, guys, these hurricanes uh, move out west uh, because this down, this downdraft is usually going on all the time. And then the storms, they meet with this center area here. It's almost right at the equator uh, where the winds hit each other. And that's why a lot of these storms go out west. Same concept for our other coast. They come off the... Um, West side of Africa, I'm sorry, it's a little late for me guys, sorry. West side of Africa and then they move west naturally and then once they get to this area they are picked up and steered by other winds. So it's global winds from here following the equator, warm, uh, cold water, warm water. So it'll follow this line until it's influenced by something else. And that's exactly what we're waiting for with Jose. Jose is being influenced by a few things. That's the Bermuda Atlantic pressure here I always talk about and it's being influenced by what's left over of Irma. And really quick, I'll, I'll acknowledge something here. There are parts of Irma that are starting to flow to the west and then down south and they almost look like they're heading towards the Gulf. I'm not sure if there's enough in there for anything to reform here, but my concern right now is if this is the 17th, this is where Jose is on the 17th, this is where we have this storm on the 17th. Depending on how long uh, Irma's weather here hangs out and, and they've been saying on TV there's not much as far as steering winds going on and that's what I've been trying to talk to you guys about. I'm really surprised to hear them say that. They didn't do a lot of talk on steering winds. I thought they would because they are what steer hurricanes, guys. It's the reason we have them and reason they go to different places are winds. It's not like hurricanes pick where they want to go and that's it. They are steered and they are influenced. So we have a bit of a timing issue here. Um, hopefully not all this stuff comes to pass at once, but we could be looking at a system here that's, you know, maybe moving east over Mexico, mixing with parts of Irma, reforming in the Gulf, and then we have Jose on the east coast. So there's a lot of stuff to look at. I'm not trying to bring, you know, everyone's nerves up and stuff like that. I'm bringing you the data that I'm seeing and the different wind patterns that I'm seeing. And I hope you guys are learning enough about this stuff to where you can... Um, separate uh, drama from reality 
and I'm showing you reality charts. I'm not telling you hurricanes are going to smash into certain places. I'm showing you what the possibilities are and how you can educate yourself with these winds. It's not a hard thing to learn. Um, it does take time. You, um, I spent a lot of time looking at these charts and sometimes just staring at them trying to get a, a visual or a mental idea of the flow of things. And I know I've said that before, but it's true. Um, sometimes you can't see things right away. It takes a while for your eyes to adjust and for you to get an idea of different movements and the flow. I like to use that word. It's a good word, flow. Flow. Um, so that's what I do. So we, we use this data and we make educated guesses. Um, we don't guarantee anything because you can't do that in weather. No one can. No one can predict where a hurricane is going to go. And if you do, it's just like going to the deli and buying a scratch off and winning 50 bucks. It's just a chance, you know? That's the way it works. So, guys, we do. We have two situations going on, possibly a third. We got this storm here that is said to be in this little gap between Mexico and the Pacific Ocean. Then we have Jose doing these loop-de-loops and stuff. Really quick, before I let you go, I want to show you the charts that have changed. Uh, here is our most recent chart. And this is very interesting to me because if you can see this blue line here, this model, believe it or not, is the exact model, the UK MET model, that predicted Irma before any other model did to be on the west coast of Florida. So that is very interesting for these guys to have been praised for their work in um, predicting where Irma was going to go and then have the, the confidence to put this data out to the public and say no. Irma's not, or Jose's not going to do this loop and come up the East Coast. Jose's going to come south and then go right into Miami. That's Miami right there. All right, so that's something to think about. And another model that changed that I found very surprising and um, just very weird is how they just put a model that does another loop-de-loop -loop up here and then somehow survives and goes into New Jersey. So I want you to think about this because we talk about uh, warm and cold water. This is all cold water up here. So once hurricanes get up here, the reason they hit places like this is because it's the end of their trip. Um, if they get past this area, they're usually swept right out to the ocean. So to see this model, to see Jose possibly go up this far north and then come back down and then have enough strength to be turned back to the west and then into our east coast, that's very interesting. I even saw some data that showed the hurricane hitting the coast, coming back out, and then hitting it again. All right, how that would happen in super cold water, I don't know. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying I've not seen that happen. Uh, we had sort of that situation with Harvey, but the Gulf is cooler or warmer water, so it's more of a chance of that happening. If you guys have been in the ocean anywhere around here, you know what I'm saying by cold. It's very cold. And that's also part of the reason why it's rare for uh, this storm I was talking about to even go north. Uh, these waters are actually significantly cold, too. Uh, not so much down in Mexico, but once you get up to Southern California, that's why we don't really get many hurricanes in Southern California. If we get the storms there, it's usually the remnants of a hurricane, like a tropical deal. And they're rare, but they happen. You can go on uh, Wikipedia, you can find all the storms that have hit, and what part of hurricanes they were, uh, and all that stuff. So, um, again, I'm trying to make this a little quick. Here's a little shot of Irma and what's left of her. Uh, this is the area that some people were talking about swinging back into the Gulf and reforming. I personally don't think that's going to happen. I think it has more of a chance of mixing with that Mexican um, hurricane, if anything. Um, and we will keep an eye on that. But guys, still, the main concern right now is Jose and what is happening with him. He's right here. Here's Irma forming that buffer zone we've been talking about for a few days now. And the jet stream is expected to pull that out to the east. And what it does is it ends up going clockwise around Jose, as you can see in the model here. And then it becomes the actual wall that does not allow Jose to go out to the ocean. It basically forces Jose to go to the east coast. And then there's another pressure down here. If you see, move a little bit forward, there we go. So you got Jose here, and you got another pressure building up from another front coming. So basically, Jose's stuck in this little area, having nowhere else to go but the East Coast. And I'm, a one, I'm wondering if this is maybe why one of those models showed the hurricane hitting, coming back out, and then hitting. Maybe it's because it doesn't have anywhere to go. This pressure's too big. But I, just, I don't see it surviving that long to make a double hit. 
you can see it uh, it was sticking out right there so right now where would you go if you were Jose you know path of least resistance basically and that would be into the coast uh, pressures so then we got that frame and our that was our last frame of the day so I think what this one shows is it hits the coast comes back out and then fades in with this area when it weakens just like Irma did when it hit land so we have a lot to look out for guys I just wanted to bring this to your attention I think it's important um, it's what's going on around these storms that makes the difference. It's not the storms themselves just picking and choosing. It's what's going on around them. And again, right here, we had what? There was a 109. And this is 10 meters off the ground, guys. That's it. All right. I will talk to you all in the morning. Thank you for staying up with me. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.